Hello and welcome back to Will It Work? Today we're going to take a look at connecting a USB-C iPad to Apple's iPod Hi-Fi speaker system. And no, I don't mean connecting it to the auxiliary port in the back, but I'm talking about connecting it to the 30-pin adapter to get full functionality, that of charging, audio, and remote controls. So just a little bit of history. This speaker came out in 2006. It was targeted at the high end of the iPod speaker dock market. It was $349 and you would put your iPod in here and then you'd be able to listen to music, control it with a remote control and also charge it. Later you'd also be able to do this with the iPhone and even after Apple switched to Lightning you could still use it with their 30 pin to Lightning connector. Especially if you had one of these plastic bracing docks you could put it in to give it some stability. And then you just put it in here and you could put your iPhone on top. Now the first thing I did when I got the speaker and just tried it out with my iPhone and I couldn't get it to work. It took me like 10 or 20 times plugging it in and out just to get it to connect where it would play audio through it. And I thought there was something wrong with the uh, iPod Hi-Fi. I got online and found out that a lot of people were having this problem with Apple's 30 pin adapter and the iPod Hi-Fi. Apparently in the last couple of years with an iOS update it broke. Could have been iOS 13, could have been iOS 14, I don't know. But it really is that bad. It's almost unusable. So even before I realized that problem, my theory was to get this to USB-C was going to be it was going to involve converting lightning to USB. Now let me show you why that was a bust as well. So this is a lightning to USB-C adapter. I featured this a few months ago in a video I did where I made a 150 foot long lightning earbuds cable. So this does audio and remote controls, but it doesn't do power, so that's strike one. But even worse, it doesn't work with a 30 pin adapter or the headphone jack adapter. It only works with lightning headphones or lightning earbuds. So this is out. There's about four or five different generic ones on Amazon besides that Belkin one, and they all work exactly the same. The other type of lightning to USB adapter you can get is for power. This only does charging, nothing else. It does work with the 30 pin adapter, but like I said, just charging, nothing exciting. So that's out. So lightning has been a complete bust. So how are we going to get the 30 pin connector to USB to connect it to those new iPads? Okay, so this square black piece right here is called the Doc Boss 5 adapter from a company called Cable Jive. It came out around the time Apple introduced the first Lightning iPhone and was a competitor to Apple's 30 pin to Lightning adapter. The longer black adapter you see down here at the bottom is called the Skosh Passport Dock. Now if you're unfamiliar with that, let me give you a little bit of background. All of the early 30 pin speaker docks charged over a 12 volt Firewire pin in the 30 pin adapter because the iPod's roots are in Firewire. Apple added the ability to charge over USB in 2004 and then pulled the ability to charge over Firewire in 2008, meaning all the new phones and iPods that came out would play audio and the remote controls would work in these old speakers, but they wouldn't charge. So some manufacturers came up with little adapters that would reroute the 12 volts to the 5 volt USB pin. And that's what this does here, and that allows us to continue to charge. So on the top of the Doc Boss 5 adapter is a USB-A port and a female 3.5 millimeter TRRS audio jack that will carry the audio and the remote controls. The USB is for power. Now I know what you're thinking, wait a minute, those USB-C iPads don't have a headphone jack. And you're right, they don't. But we can convert that to USB pretty easily. But you're also thinking, wait a minute, then you'd need two USB-C ports and those iPads only have one, and you'd be right. So what we're going to use is this little USB-C splitter adapter I got. This one's from Ugreen. I've had good luck with their products. And as you can see here on the bottom, there is a spot for a TRRS audio jack and a USB-C connection for power delivery. So we will combine the two in here, and then we can plug this directly into the new iPad mini 6th generation in this case. But let's take it a step further. And I went out and got this USB-C dock. 
Nothing fancy here, it's just a pass-through. It's got a little dial in the back that allows you to adjust the height of the USB-C mail pin here in case you have a case. And it has a little bit of wiggle room and a nice strong back for support. So let me put everything together and we'll see if it works. Okay, so let's review our setup here. We have an iPad Mini 6th generation plugged into a USB-C dock. In the 30-pin dock, we've got the Skosh dock adapter to give us power. We've got the Cable Jive Dock Boss 5 adapter, which is going to take the 30-pin signals and slit them out to USB for power and 3.5mm audio jack for audio and remote controls. You'll notice I have right angle connectors here. I didn't want arching cables over the top. I wanted to make it look a little bit better, so everything's right angle. So let's fire this up and see if it works. Here is the uh, original remote control that comes with the iPod Hi-Fi. This is some YouTube friendly music. I just put some random cover art on here so you can see how nice it looks with this bigger screen. So we're charging, we've got remote controls, the audio is working. If you'll notice in the bottom right hand corner of the iPod Hi-Fi, you'll see a green light go off when I give remote control commands. That is the speaker system acknowledging the remote command. Also, if you look on the Dock Boss 5, you'll see a little blue LED light go off as well when I hit next or back or stop or start. Now watch this when I do the volume. You'll see the green light on the speaker, but you won't see the blue light on the Dock Boss 5. That's because the Dock Boss 5 is not sending any remote commands up to the iPad to change the volume. The volume amplification changes only on the speaker itself. It doesn't send any commands to change that on the iPad Mini. So there we go. We can successfully connect an iPad Mini 6th generation with USB-C to the iPod Hi-5 with full functionality of charging, audio, and remote controls just like Steve Jobs intended. So that's going to do it for this video. I hope to do a few more with this speaker system in the future, so put some ideas down in the comments below of things you'd like me to try with it. I do hope you're enjoying all these videos. Please like and subscribe if you are. I will be back soon. But that's all for now. Take care.